why don't you describe your character? Because again, he's the kind of the big mystery of the show right now, and where we're going to meet him. Yeah, so we're going to meet him, uh, the man. We're going to meet him as um, you know, crashing on Earth as a meteor, and uh, you know, first of all, the first I think the first two episodes who really don't have a clue of what's his in, his intention, what what's his plan, and that's the that's the good part of it. So the, the show is all about you know this five desperate strangers they get like extraordinary abilities superpowers kind of so they have to figure out why this happened and and what's their mission and you know and apparently the man is the only one that kind of knows what's going on and why this is happening and uh, one of the lines of the man which I think it's it kind of defines the show a little bit it, it's like nothing is random everything is, is for one reason for a, everything is is for a reason yeah um, so that's that's basically the man for now. Uh, for me, as an actor, you know, playing uh, this story in this apocalyptic biblical background, um, he's the devil. He, you know, he's he's the dark side of humanity. He he represents everything that unfortunately all of us um, have inside of inside of us um, in terms of, of of you know potential. You know, I, I really think, and I, 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 I keep saying this, we all have inside of us stuff that sometimes we, we don't know we possess. And, and there are places that sometimes are being pushed uh, under certain certain circumstances. And, and I think that's the essence of this character. Uh, what I like uh, in, in, about this character and the way that, I, that he's being written is, is, is the fact that he can't use any, any special power any extraordinary ability he can only manipulate situations and people using you know chat conversation uh, pulling some some <laughs> some strings uh, and 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 using people uh, a lot which is unfortunately something that we can connect we can relate we all know about stories that people do and then stuff that happens you know inside of like certain organizations and certain situations so we really unfortunately we're really familiarized with that type of manipulation well when you first read the script I mean again you your character comes out of a crater I mean he mm -hmm. could be Superman coming down from Krypton he could be anything he could be the Terminator, Terminator from the future, <laughs> Terminator from the future. We're like what do you mean naked <laughs> Really, like, completely naked? Yeah, not even dust? No, no. Was there some appeal in that when you first read the script? You're thinking, yes, that's my moment to make an entrance? <laughs> Look, uh, when I read the script, I, mean, I, I was not even sure of which character I was kind of leaning to, um, towards. And so I was I was just reading it for the fun of reading a script. It's, I mean, reading script and, and knowing about stories out there is one of my favorite things in this job. So I wasn't. I was. I was kind of looking for something extreme, at least opposite of what I um, played last time, um, at least here in America, which was Jesus. So I was looking for something uh, quite different. I, I never imagined that I would be bumping into this, into this story, and especially with his characters, which is kind of like. It, it, it almost seems like it was planned, but it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't planned at all. Um, it happened. What I, like I said, I mean, I think what I, what, what I, what I really connect, what I really connect with this, with this story. I think, especially after playing Jesus, is like in my my perspective of good and evil, and and how I think it's easier for us to blame on a specific, like a, a an object, of, like an object of of saying like, oh, the reason that we have all this thing going on in this world is because of that and it's like a specific thing so it's easier because we so it's like it's it's we are paying our own conscience to say look i don't have i don't have nothing to do with it <laughs> and i especially after playing jesus i really think that shift that there was a big shift on, on in my perspective of that i think we all have a tremendous role to play in this in this life in this society and the only purpose of, of us, um, you know, living in this planet is just to, sh to live among and to live sharing um, uh, and to help each other and to love each other. So, you know, having having this perspective of, 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 of not blaming one specific thing like the devil, one person, the fact that his, this, this devil is, is, is being played as, as, you know, it could be anyone and anywhere. 
regardless of age, race, you know, economic situation. That is something that really resonated with me, especially after playing after playing Jesus. You know, that that perspective of like, you know, I would love to have a take on this side and at least show people what I think about this, the, you know, this particularly. So subject. why the messengers? Why does he want to get involved with the messengers at all? Oh, that's crucial. That's like, <laughs> that's like confidential. That's <laughs> well, that's the big question people that's are going to be asking. Question. What I does mean, he want with them? <laughs> okay, what I can say is that the, 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 uh, like the final objective is not clear at all. It, it's, it's, it becomes more clear as we go. And then when we, we kind of think that we figure it out, it, it shifts and it's like, it's the opposite Well, he comes that. almost as a benevolent person to kind of answer their prayers in a weird way. In a weird He's way. He's got a way of wanting to give them something they really desire and True. manipulate them for his own purposes. For his own purposes. So there's kind of that interesting tug and pull. Is he going to be doing this for them or is he doing for him? What's going on? That's, that's <laughs> the big question. I mean, he definitely has an agenda. Okay, so it's not, and come on, we're not, we're, let's not be naive. He's not the good guy. Okay, he's not the good guy. So he's. So we're not rooting for him this time. I mean, we might root, we might root for some of his arguments. You know, some, some of, some of the stuff he comes up as an argument is pretty good, pretty good, you know, like pretty good and pretty reasonable. <laughs> you know, which is really tricky and 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 wicked actually it's just like <laughs> wow he really got me on that one you know and it's like ah, i, I want to hate them you know it's like he's kind of the character you love to hate you know that that type of thing so i i don't think he's like the reason is one thing the tools is another thing so i think he uses a lot of stuff that is quite reasonable and quite understanding and it's like we will actually be on his side in certain arguments you know uh if that it's enough to make us be on his side that's a, that's like that's tricky that's tricky and it's it, it really will depend on the audience you know and it really will depend on how they that's that's why i'm so excited about this show it's like i don't have a clue of how people will react to this character at all i mean to the show but mainly this character because it's like it's so there's so much stuff involved you know and then i i, I try to use like humor as a, a weapon as well so it, 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 it wasn't necessarily on the page that that part of it so i kind of use sarcasm and in dark humor a lot because uh, I think that's part of his, you know, charm, kind of. It's all um, seductive, hey? It's there, there's, yeah, there, it's, there's an element of that, Well, so. like with your co-star, Craig Frank, he mentioned his character just desperately wants to believe there's alien life out there. So is he <laughs> going to meet the man? <laughs> is he going to go, oh my god, you're an alien from outer space and I just want to know everything about you? <laughs> no, because, I mean, our close encounter, I mean, the, the man and, 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 and Craig and the, and the character play, the Craig plays, um, it's going to be quite, quite uh, devastating for him. So he's <laughs> You're gonna, not an alien? He's, not, he's going to freak out because he's going to see, see stuff. And I'm like, he's definitely not an, an alien. Yeah. Uh, he's he's, he's going to be bumped, but I'll, he's going to be a freak, freak out as well. So it's going to be fun to watch our... <laughs> what our was it like to film that scene for you and Craig when you first did that? Uh, well, first of all, he's just there. And he suffers the consequences of what's going on. So it's not, it's not like me and, you know, and him, like against each other but so it's 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 fun <laughs> to see his reaction when he looks at the man like yikes <laughs> that's my worst nightmare <laughs> that's my worst nice nightmare. yeah I, I wish you were an alien i think it would be easier actually and that's what i think he thinks well you think again this guy's a map master manipulator mm -hmm. and if craig's character Alan, wants to believe there's alien life out he'll go of course i'm alien life what do you want to know <laughs> yeah, I, th I think for the man i think um Ellen, which is the, the character that Craig plays, uh, he thinks he's a minor pawn. You know, he's not he's not as crucial as all, all the other messengers, at least for for the man. That being said, he might he might use him. You know, he might end up using him because he knows that he plays. He's getting more and more as we go into the show. He's getting more and more closer to the messengers, and he although he doesn't have any special power. So he's going to use basically his charisma, his charm, and all of these fine little ideas in his head to kind of manipulate and people's people. fears above all. Test you know, the fears. knowing that he knows about the dark stuff about people, he feels that if there's any power. That's that might be it. I mean, you know, he knows stuff. He knows. Is that how he finds them? He, he knows intel. Yeah, he knows <laughs> stuff. The only thing he doesn't know is uh, 
how this God, how God's plan is going to work out, you know. But everything else, I mean, from people like from the messengers' families to whatever they did, or he knows everything. And if he doesn't, he gets someone to get that for him. For him, so he's the ultimate, you know, manipulator. Uh, but 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 I think he uses fear more than than his charm, you know. And when fear doesn't work out. He uses other other stuff, and Charm might be one of them. But he just he just I think he has fun along the way. You know, uh, while he's getting like he thinks he's in charge a lot of the times of the situation. And it's funny to see when he realizes he's not in charge. <laughs> you know, it's a story about how what we think might be gifts, maybe burdens, and then what what we think is good, maybe bad. So it's ultimately it's the shift of our perspectives. That's why I think it's the show. So psychological uh, element too. Right? Psychological element too, but o overall something that in certain certain times we're gonna stop and have to think and eva evaluate what we think we know. Well, we know we're gonna get the four horsemen of the apocalypse. How exciting we know is that? that. <laughs> it, it is. It is quite exciting. It's quite exciting. It is. It is. So, so that's we, something kind of cool to look forward to. It is. It is. <laughs> wait until you see it. Uh, uh, can't it's, wait. it's epic. <laughs>